Hey Tommy, what do you think is the best mid-sized truck in the land? Well, you know, we at TFL don't have a chance to live with them long term, but you guys do. And in this very special edition of Dude, I Love or Hate My Ride, at home. At home, that's right. We are looking at all of the mid-sized trucks that you guys sent us, and we're seeing what they're like long term. Yeah, from people who actually put out real money to buy real trucks. And we've got them all, Tommy. We've got a Ranger, we've got a Frontier, we've got a Tacoma, we've got a Ridgeline, and of course we have... Colorado. And at the end of this video, a bonus, a V8. Mid-sized truck, that's right. But you're gonna have to stay tuned to the end to find out what that is because it's pretty cool. Do you guys love trucks? If so, we've got a new podcast that will keep you entertained for hours from on-road to off-road, from Raptors to Frontiers to Tacomas. Check out tfltruck.com slash podcast or go to wherever you get your favorite podcast, including Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Spotify. Now we're gonna start out with the Ford Ranger and this one is sent to us by our friend Dan. Yep, and Dan, we love you, dude, but we're gonna rate your ride at the end of your video. So why don't you roll the video and let's see what Dan has submitted for us to rate. Here we go. Oh, he's rolling in. Yeah, he's rolling in, look at that. Look at that. Professional shot there, Dan. It's brand new. It still has uh, dealer plates. Howdy folks, my name is Daniel. This is my 2019 Ford Ranger, and dude, I love my ride. Last year, last May, I went down to Casey Jackson Ford and I saw this there sitting on a lot. Picked it up, and uh, I've got about 15,000 miles on it since then. When I got it, it was sitting on these Nitto Terra Grappler G2 tires. A little bit slightly larger than the stock, these are a 265-70-17, and those are uh, slightly larger because uh, stock size is 265-65. Zero fitment issues whatsoever. Helping matters is a little spacer lift. It came with a lift, but I'm gonna go a little bit smaller with this two and a quarter versus what I believe is either a two and a half or a three that's in it now. I had it uh, rhino lined. I also put on a DZ tailgate damper. One of the other things that I did is I put on a Gator soft tri-fold tonneau cover. And it's really nice as you can just fold it out of the way. This uh, bed extender is beautiful because you can put all sorts of stuff right in here for, uh, for groceries and whatnot. It's great for going out, but I've actually used it for this. I've extended the bed out and I've hauled a twin size mattress back here. When I bought the truck, it did not come with a tow package. I added on a draw tight hitch. It still retains the, tow, the factory tow rating. And I also installed the factory the factory plug for the seven and four pin connector. Once you plug it in, all the wiring is the same between tow package and non tow package trucks. And it's actually ready to go. Under the hood, we've got the EcoBoost 2.3 liter. This under the hood is all factory. Have not touched a thing. One of my favorite features that I and my wife love about this Remote start lifetime average has been 18.8. That's with towing, that's with off-roading, that's with trying to get good fuel mileage. One of my biggest problems that I have with this truck is actually the four-wheel drive switch. It's, it's not really attached to anything. There's no click. It doesn't feel solid at all. One of the things that I have done is I went to Covercraft and I got their black suede dash mat and I much prefer the look of it over the, uh, the hard plastic that you get in the XL and XLT models. Now this thing does not lack for power at all. Driving around in a little bit of a field really isn't a problem. All right, and that is 60. 
which is a speed limit. All right, let's go home. Yep, we're going in the weeds. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy already! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! All right, folks, and with that, I think that about wraps it out. And I'd say, yes, I love my truck. Oh <laughs> All right, Tommy, how do you rate Dan's truck? I gotta say, he's doing donuts, he did a zero to 60. He did it all, man. He yeah. watches our videos. He did it all. Dan, I actually, in the past, haven't been a big fan of the new Ranger, but I love what you've done with this Ranger. It looks a little bit leveled. You know, it's got that really cool gray paint job on the black wheels. I'm gonna give it a solid eight out of 10. You know what? I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 because of that dash condom he's got on there. <laughs> it makes me feel <laughs> like the second you put carpet on your dash, you are keeping that truck long term. So Tommy, what is next? Next up, we've got something completely different. We've got Anthony, and Anthony has a Honda Ridgeline. Take a look at this. Hi, my name is Anthony Seahome from Connecticut, and this is my 2019 Honda Ridgeline RTLE. The MSRP on this vehicle is around $42,000 with the options we had. Yeah, we got it from our local Honda dealer at around 38, just over a year ago. The last truck we had in our family was a 1997 Ford F-150. But we got rid of that a couple years ago and recently we saw the need in a newer vehicle that could carry the things we need to. Has all the power I needed to. It's no speed demon, but it gives me the passing power I'll need on the highway, even at higher speeds. Um, it's just a dream to drive. This is also thanks to it's quite controversial, um, but this is a unibody truck. It is not body on frame. As a result, it does have front and rear independent uh, suspension. Now, um, this means that it can't tow as much, but it does offer an extremely smooth ride on any road that you could be on. Back here, we have a five foot bed with a manual locking tailgate that is a dealer installed option. It not only opens like a normal tailgate, although as you can see, it is not dampened. It also opens sort of like a door down here. You can open it as such and you have access to the bed. Inside here, there is also a trunk. It's not super big, but you can store what you need to in here. We just have some gloves and other things in here. And that's also where your spare tire and tire jack is located. We do have a bed rug in here, but as you can see, the bed itself is made of composite material. Going out and about, it has all the space we need. And with its 1,500 pound, well, about 1,500 pound payload capacity, we're never really overloading it. Getting into the interior, which is one of the main reasons we bought this vehicle, as you can see, it's very SUV-like, almost exactly like a Honda Pilot. It's very, very comfortable for road trips. You can sit in here for hours on end and enjoy every second of that ride. I am six foot seven, so when considering competitors such as the Toyota Tacoma, Ford Ranger, amongst other things, I really didn't fit, and if I did, it was uncomfortable. But with the seat all the way back, I fit perfectly fine in here. The infotainment isn't my favorite, but I use Apple CarPlay. It also has Android Auto. We have a 60-40 folding seat where you can using this handle here, fold these seats up in case you need to put stuff on the floor. For the past about 6,500 miles that I've driven this truck, it has been very, very good to me. I've had no mechanical issues. Um, I've enjoyed every mile I've driven on it. Um, thanks to its LED headlights, Honda sensing, which you can see from the camera up in the windshield, as well as in the Honda logo here. I'd highly recommend this to anyone who would like a truck with, doesn't necessarily have the highest uh, towing capacity, but just something to haul their toys around, put some stuff in the bed. You'd also be able to carry them or their family very comfortably up front. So yeah, I would like to thank you all for watching. And um, thanks to the TFL guys for watching this video as well. You know what's really cool about these videos, Tommy? We get to learn and see actual owners with real trucks and the passion behind them. Because let's face it, the Ridgeline doesn't have a low speed transfer case. So a lot of you guys out there don't think it's a real truck, but this dude certainly does. And for that reason, I'm gonna give it a eight out of 10. Yeah, for sure. And what is cool about the Ridgeline is even though it gets a lot of hate for not being body on frame, you know, an independent suspension, for uh, this gentleman, it works perfectly. You know, it does everything Anthony needs it to do. It's got a lot of room. So Anthony, I think you found your perfect truck. I'm gonna give it a seven, seven out of 10. You know, there's not a lot of dudes that are as tall as he that would fit into all these mid-sized trucks. But yet, with the packaging that Honda threw in there, he fits, and that's pretty cool. All right, what's next? Okay, so next up, we've got 
the sales king. The sales king? Yep. The most popular truck in the land? Yep, not the Tiger King. The sales king. The sales king. <laughs> this, I take it as a Tacoma. It, yes, it is. It is. This is Matthew's Toyota Tacoma. And it's been Overland prepped. It's got some cool stuff. All right, Tommy, roll the video. Let's see what he's done to his taco. Yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. Ready? This is a uh, pretty much a starting out life as a 2016 uh, Toyota uh, Tacoma off-road. Uh, of course, with the with the 3.5 and, and the and the six-speed automatic transmission, I really appreciate the Toyota dealership uh, putting on the the, the nice uh, TRD grill for me. That was awfully nice. But uh, first addition you might notice down here is the little sub bumper that usually sticks out. I have replaced with an all an all steel winch bumper. So behind there is a Smitty built winch, 9,500 pound winch. That has uh, actually helped me out quite a bit, uh, especially during Hurricane Harvey, as I live down here in Houston, Texas. All right, let's just start with the most obvious feature. The thing I did here was to add this uh, this modular off-road rack. So this is the uh, the Lightner design rack. So shout out to Lightner. I, people stop me want to talk about it all the time. The reason I got the rack with all the storage was because this is a small truck. I wanted a small truck. I wanted a truck that would go in the garage, and I wanted a truck that was lighter, both on gas mileage and. Uh, on the trail. That's it, I've got four containers. Each one of them is a cubic foot. They got all my stuff in there. Recovery gear and uh, uh, ammunition if I need it. Of course, we've got a first aid kit here. CBI designed all steel bumper back here with the uh, rated tow hitches or anchor points, I should say. You can see I stuck with the regular Toyota uh, rims. I did go with a 31 inch LT rated tires. That seems to have made the most difference of anything I did to the truck as far as its off-road capabilities was those tires. I do have an old man Emu suspension back here, not the fancy fancy one, but just the regular out, you know, the, the regular ones uh, with the Adelie, with the uh, Dakar leaf springs right in here. Steel rock rails here. They replaced the steps that were on the side that came with the truck. One of the things I don't like about the truck that was a compromise uh, is this uh, extended cab, the access cab rather than the quad cab. Back in 2016, you couldn't get this truck very easily with a double cab and a long bed. That became a lot easier in 2017, but I really did want the long bed because I go hunting and, and uh, putting things up there. Sometimes I just, the space was important to me. Here's another thing that's a little different on my truck. It's a two meter 440 amateur radio for comms. Like I said, I do go out by myself quite a bit. Since 2016, I haven't put that many miles on this truck. So uh, I work at home for the most part, for the last three years. So I haven't, I don't end up putting that many miles on my truck actually. So it should last me a good long while. And there's just a complete lack of storage in here really for the most part. So that's been a, an issue time to time, which I addressed somewhat with the, with the, with the space in the bed. Down here is the two meter 440 comms. That is really good because between the system of repeaters and, and other things I can, you know, even if I'm way out into the, you know, into my family farm and ranch land, I end up with a really good ability to communicate back to where I need to. Oh yeah, here's another thing I did like this about this truck, for whatever reason, came with this really unique colored bezel. In 2016, nowadays, they look much more boring. That is one prep truck, Dad. Did you see that? He's got rock sliders, big tires. Man, that's a cool looking rig. Yeah, and uh, what do you rate that rig, Tommy? Ooh, I think he did a good job with it. Interesting that he went for the Axis cab for more of an overland build, uh, but I think it came out great. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. This is a well-done truck. Sounds like he loves it. Did you see what he looks like? The guy? Yeah. Looks just like Nathan. And for that reason, I'm going to give you a 10 out of 10. Look at that. That's Nathan. <laughs> he doesn't look anything like Nathan. <laughs> he looks just like Nathan. <laughs> he even puts his thumb in the picture. You like Nathan Wood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's next, Tommy? <laughs> Sorry, Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> next up, we are going something a little bit more American. Jeep Gladiator. This is Scott's Gladiator, and he's done some cool stuff with it as well. Love the color, bright red. Let's learn a little bit more. Firecracker red? Hi, my name is Scott Garrick, and this is my 2020 Jeep Gladiator. I bought this truck back in January, and I've got it right around 3,500 miles on it. Uh, the MSRP on this one was right around 52,000. Um, from what I did a little bit of research, it's really, really hard to find kind of the lower end uh, Rubicons. Most of the uh, dealers generally option them up 55K uh, plus. The reason I actually bought this truck was I previously had a 2019 uh, Ram 1500 Bighorn. And unfortunately that truck was lemon law due to the fact that it had massive electrical issues. I really wanted something that could blend some off-road, some towing, um, 
also have some, you know, just, just a little bit of everything. I looked at the Chevy Trail Boss. The one thing I did not like about that was that it uh, just had the G80 locker. You couldn't physically have a button in there, which I don't understand because the ZR2 does have that option. Then I also looked at the uh, Tacoma TRD Pro. While it could tow, um, it actually had a better tow rating than the uh, Rubicon. Um, the downside was it didn't have a front locker. Getting close to the same prices um, as I got this Rubicon for, um, it just didn't make sense in that, in that regard for me either. I also looked at the Colorado ZR2 Bison, and the great part about that one was it had the front and rear lockers, it had skid plates, it had everything else, but it could only tow 5,000 pounds. They do have a MK7 GTI that I do tow to race events, and it was kind of important that, you know, once I put that on the trailer and everything that we're, we're right at about 4,500 to 5,000 pounds, and I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of uh, space afterwards. Other parts of the reason why I like this truck, basically the aftermarket. Um, with this, you can get, you know, very easy bolt-on bumpers, um, as you can see. Um, Everything bolts right up um, when you get, uh, it sounds silly, but uh, I like decals, not, not anything crazy or anything weird, but I do like decals. I've got the, my Arizona flag, I'm from Arizona. I was able to add kind of some off-road lights. If you don't get the LED light package, please replace the lights. They're basically like, uh, basically little gnomes in there holding candlesticks and it's not necessarily the greatest. It's nice to be able to take the top off. Um, I have the Freedom Tops and it comes off very, very easily and very quickly. It already came with some off-road tires, um, which most of the manufacturers don't seem to come with very good off-road tires, um, especially like the Tacoma. I was kind of disappointed in the TRD Pro um, and what it came with. When it does get windy, it does kind of toss all over the place because it has that big uh, heavy-duty axle on the front. Um, has a tendency to not be as stable as some of the independent uh, front suspension vehicles. For me, I go six miles to work, so it works out really great for me. Um, so those would be kind of the pros and cons, and thank you for watching my video. So Tommy, did you notice that under the trail rated, he's already got one of those badges for, yeah, see, it's, it's right there, right there. He's already got one of those little badges for having done one of the official Jeep trails. And for that reason, dude, I'm going to give you a nine out of 10 because you've only had it for 3,500 miles and you've already earned a trail badge. Yeah, I think it's cool. Uh, interesting look that he doesn't have much of a lift, but it's still custom front bumper, custom front winch. This is a very purposeful looking truck, right? It's not showy. It's not over the top. I'm also going to give you a nine out of 10. That's one darn cool looking mid-sized truck. The Rubicon is of course not the best selling truck. It's the Tacoma in the segment, but the second best selling truck is that one right there. It is a Colorado, so let's check it out. This is Rick's truck, not so much of an off-road truck, but he does use it for some hauling purposes. Should we find out? Hope he doesn't haul that huge trailer. Oh, we're about to find out. All right, let's find out what he hauls. Well, Marty, this is a great idea. What you see here is a 2019 Chevy Colorado. It's the LT version. Uh, pretty much this is the way I got it off the lot. I've done a couple things, but not too much. One thing that I was really looking for is Duramax. So this is a Duramax diesel inline four turbo. One other thing that they put on here that I didn't ask for, but it looks good to me, is a black bow tie. And of course there's the air dam, which uh, I'm not a big fan of. In fact, I would like to take it off as I just did a little scuff there and that was just on a dirt road. Something they added on was these uh, rails but I added the tonneau cover, just pull down one lever, and I can push it all the way in. <laughs> I've had other uh, tonneau covers, soft tonneau covers, and uh, they just seem to uh, get flimsy after a while. I wanted something a little bit more substantial. One other thing that I thought was really nice about this truck that I liked was that it had integrated uh, Brake control, heated steering wheel, cloth seats that are also heated, which is amazing. Been very good truck. It's only got 6,000 miles on it. I uh, bought it last fall. Uh, it's been very good to me. I've had lots of trucks. Uh, this replaced a 2019 Ridgeline, which, which I really, really liked. Uh, but the big problem was this camper trailer that you see right here. I purchased that last spring 
and the ridge line could pull it. In fact, I pulled it clear down to Durango, 4,000 pounds dry. And like I said, the ridge line could pull it, but it just, the, the back tires on the, on the ridge line just kind of squatted on both sides. So um, I thought, well, I better get a better truck. And then I had a Tundra and I had a Tacoma and I had a old, old seven Tundra long bed. I've had uh, about six different trailers in the last 10 years. Um, so hopefully I've got a pair that'll uh, last me for a while. Oh, as you can see, this is also the long bed version. So again, it's Rick Lovato. From Frederick, Colorado. And uh, enjoy your shows, keep it up. All right, Tommy. That is a cool Colorado. And you know what the coolest thing about it is? What? It matches a trailer. I mean, come on, how often do you see a truck and a trailer? Look at those colors, they, they're completely matched. You think you bought it that way or you think that was just on coincidence? I don't know, uh, but I do like the blacked out uh, bow tie in the front. Yeah. Pretty cool, right? Let us know in the comment section below what's been your favorite truck so far, but we're not quite done. What's your rating? My rating on this guy? Yeah. Solid truck, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10 because whenever you match a trailer to a truck, <laughs> that is, Really cool. All right. He's from Frederick, too. Nice. Colorado. Local. Yep. Local boy. All right. One more truck left in the segment, if I am not mistaken, and this should be our Frontier. So this is Jesse, and Jesse absolutely loves his Frontier. It's a 2016. It's not the full, um, what do they call it, Nissan? Crew cab? This is, I think they call it the king cab. You know, each manufacturer calls it something different. I'm going to call it the pain in the ass door cab. Okay. Well, let's <laughs> see if he agrees. Hey everyone, this is my 2016 Nissan Frontier uh, 4x4 SV model. Um, I put a uh, bold nose bar as well as an LED light bar on it. Got the uh, fog lights at the bottom. Um, I did buy a brand new. I'm at 40,000 miles now. I just put a new battery in as well as these Wrangler Duratrex. Um, I had the XD series 16 inch wheels. Um, I put these on right when I bought it as well as the uh, topper camper shell. Uh, one thing I love about the uh, My Model Frontier comes with the dark interior. You don't really see that a lot unless you get the uh, Pro 4X or the Desert Runner, and it comes with the leather. Here's the uh, switch for the light bar. Um, I do have the heated seats, four high, four low. Has the nice uh, screen on it. Doesn't have navigation though. I did remove the back seat behind the driver's side just so I can have more room. Uh, another little mini mod i just put a uh, locking gas cap on it so i can open and close it put the topper shell on it just because what i do for work i can put all my tools back here i can lock it up got a little spot for the dog got the uh, backup sensors a couple other things i've done is put uh just some blind spot mirrors on it the little visor tint uh, i've done a lot of towing with this the in-laws have a boat it's about 33 3500 pounds uh, with the trailer, toes are just fine. I'm in Northern California, so there's a lot of hills, a lot of mountains. I used to have a pop-up camper as well. That was about 1,500 pounds. Towed it just fine up through Northern California into Oregon. Um, the four liter is a beast. And that's what I love about it. it. Almost feels like a V8 sometimes. Only thing uh, I wish I had was four doors. I got a family now, so the car seat doesn't really fit back there. Can't put the whole family in. Uh, but I told the wife, hey, I'm never going to get rid of this. Never going to make them like this again with the 4 liter V6. The gas isn't that great, but hey, my company pays for the gas, so I'm not really complaining. No major issues yet. No engine mods, just a K&N uh, air filter, not an air intake. When I go out fishing, when I go do some BLM land up north, can't ask for more. It's an awesome truck. Definitely recommend it. You're looking for a mid-sized truck with some good power. You know, I love the topper and I love the wheels and tires. It really gives it a kind of purposeful, angry, mean, off-road look. And, you know, that is a good thing in my book. So I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, Tommy. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I love this truck, but it sounds like he needs the bigger cab now that he has a family. Uh, you know, with no rear seats in there, you're going to have to get a uh, another vehicle to haul around your kids. But it sounds like he may have one. So you, you agree with the pain in the ass doors? I do. Yeah, <laughs> right. it sounds like they're a pain in the butt. And in the beginning of this video, we promised you a V8 mid-sized truck. And there's only one. Well, it's no longer being sold if that could be, right? Yeah, that's right. Now, this is Adam's truck. Right. This is a Dodge Dakota with the 4.7 V8. 
when it went out of production, what was it, seven years ago now? I'm gonna go with that, sure. Yeah, I think 2013. <laughs> it was the only mid-sizer with that big old engine. All right. So let's learn a little bit more about this. It, his is a little bit older than 05, but same generation. We've actually reviewed this truck, if you recall. We God, had, a, so we had one ago. such a long time ago. We put our dog in the back. Look, he does like a full reveal. He walks up to it. Oh, cool. It's got a little bit of uh, drama going hey, on buddy. here. Just thought I'd film my- Oh, painting the S-Doors. 2005 Dodge Dakota. SLT four wheel drive. It's got the 4.7 liter V8. I actually got this truck in January of 2012. It was my grandfather's truck and got to where he shouldn't be driving anymore, so he just decided to give it to me. I got it with 21,000 miles approximately. Uh, I think now we're up to 66,941. It's a five speed automatic. I took a lot of the badges and stuff off of it. Spray in bed liner, uh, line X, put some stainless screws uh, for the tailgate uh, handle and the hold down screws. These are factory, uh, excuse me, factory uh, Chrysler uh, taillights. Uh, got some LED reverse bulbs in there too. This bumper was chrome. I sprayed it with some bed liner. Been quite a few years ago and it's held up pretty well. These fender flares are uh, Dodge fender flares. The front bumper was chrome. I replaced it with a black bumper. Uh, this grill guard I got off of either Craigslist or Facebook. These are some aftermarket headlights. All the LED like halos in there and stuff. They they worked for about a year or so and then they sort of gave out. <laughs> so I just unhooked them on. But the lights, the normal lights and everything work fine. The one thing about this truck that I do not like is these doors when you're in a parking lot and you know it's kind of tight with cars beside you when you have stuff here in the back it's difficult to pull the stuff out my son he's 10 years old now so he he can barely fit back here now i uh, changed the spark plugs out probably 20 or 30 thousand miles ago i did add uh an Adelief back here, um, give it a little extra height. I can't remember what kind of shocks they are, but they're meant for an extra, to carry extra load, so um, that raised the back of the truck up probably an inch or two. And in the front, I did a two inch spacer lift right there. I got the radio replaced as soon as I got it because all it had was a CD. So this is an outdated radio now, but it does stream Bluetooth. This trim piece used to be, you can sort of see it underneath, uh, brown or uh, a wood grain. I sprayed it with black plastic dip. All in all, it's, it's been a great truck. Haven't had any issues with it. Just changed the oil. I've changed the coolant once. I did replace this with a uh, LED. This one did not come with a tow package from the factory, so I, I bought the, uh, the plate that bolts in there, so and then wired up a four a four pin wiring to the to the lights. Oh, another thing I did, I did tune it um, with a handheld tuner for premium fuel now. It does provide a little more giddy up. I mean, it's not really lacking for power to start with, but I bought this camper shell for it when I first got it and I've had it off for quite some time now. I thought I was gonna need it, but I really don't need it. There's our dog Cooper in the background. Hi Cooper. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, stay safe and healthy out there and keep on trucking. All right, Tommy, I'm going to have to take a point off because this dog is eating grass. What is up with that? <laughs> it's not relevant to the truck. <laughs> you know, uh, it was a cool truck. Um, my only like um, criticism of that truck was uh, I wish they'd put the Hemi, the big old Hemi into it. Oh, uh, it's such a small truck. A 4.7 is plenty. But they couldn't have done it because it would have cannibalized sales from the full-size truck. But yeah, it's a cool truck. I always thought, you know, even the mid-size truck with the V8 is a great idea. And I hope that FCA gets the hint and puts the Hemi in the Gladiator. What do you think? I love the dog Cooper. I thought that was a great addition at the end of the video. I'm also a big fan of the truck. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 because I miss these Dakotas. Not very good on the inside but definitely good on the outside and it's cool having that nice V8 burble. So guys, if you want to send us a video, normally we would show you how to do it in this video, but you know what? Let's just link it in the comments below because we featured four trucks. So the first comment 
this little video that you did, Tommy, showing you guys how to actually submit your truck. And you know, how cool is that? We've got not five, but six trucks and owner reviews of those trucks. So which one's the best? Which one's the best? Um, it really depends on the one you buy. <laughs> Yeah, whichever one makes you happy is yeah. the best. <laughs> the one that you buy is the best one. Yeah. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy, head over to tfltruck.com for the latest and greatest. And news, views, and of course, at home, real owner truck reviews. Thanks for watching us and stay safe out there. Ciao.